One of the most celebrated names in crime writing, Val McDermott, has now sold around 20 million books worldwide. Her new paperback release, release Past Lying, is the seventh in her series of novels featuring the police detective Karen Pirrie, a character who's been brought to life by the actress Lauren Lyle in the drama series broadcast on STV. Val joined us in the studio to talk about her writing process. Val, this latest book, you, you spoke about waking up and you just had the story there was it like complete like you know famously Paul McCartney's yesterday was there or was it the outline and you had to work on it there's a few more words in the book than there is in yesterday <laughs> uh, but I basically I had a sense of what the story was going to be about and then I had to figure out how to how to make it work and how to put the twists and turns in along the way it doesn't normally happen to me like that mm. it's only happened a couple of times that an idea just plopped into my head fully formed so I was very glad of this and I wasn't anticipating writing a novel at that particular point. We were in New Zealand for four months uh, and I was thinking I'm going to have a nice relaxed time. I'm going to start thinking about 1999, the next book in another series, uh, do some reading, do some thinking, walk on beaches. And this popped into my head and it just kept nagging. I thought I'll put it to one side, I'll park it for now, but it wouldn't leave me alone. So the only thing I could do was to write the bloody thing, you know. And how, just... long, how long did, what was the process of that? So you got the idea for you, what's, in, in this particular case, what's the process? Well, I took it, it took me four months. I did the time I was in New Zealand. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of finished it the, the week before we were due to go back. Um, it, it's, most books take me between three and four months to write, but mostly they've been kicking around in my head for a long time before I'm ready to start writing them. Uh, the most important thing is to get the voice right. But with a series like Karen Piri, when I've, uh, this is the seventh book in the series, mm. I've got an idea of what the voice of the book is going to be. But this has got a book within a book, so I had to figure that out as well. So yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, hard, it's hard to sort of explain the, the way it works, but I start working on something and I start thinking about the problems that lie ahead and figuring out how to negotiate my way out of them and just really how to tell the story. And do you sit down and write or do you plot it all out? I don't plot it all out. I started off in my career plotting it all out very carefully because I felt that plotting was the weakest part of, the weakest tool of my toolbox really. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time planning ahead. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd write, a, write on file cards, a file card for each scene or, or, or each chapter. Uh, and if it was a multi-viewpoint story, I'd have different file cards for the different right. viewpoints. It, uh, it looked a bit like a, a fair isle jumper by the end. <laughs> of it um, but uh, I, I, I that worked for me for about a dozen books or so and then it just stopped working uh, and I think probably it was because I felt a bit more confidence in my narrative skills by that stage I'd, I'd worked through the I can't plot I don't know how to do this <laughs> and and so that's what I, what I do now I, I always have a sense of the sort of arc of the story I know who's done what to whom and probably most of the why but, um, and it just and flows from Yeah, it. and I know two or three key turning points right. along the way, uh, and then I just aim for them. And do you have discipline? I mean, we keep on hearing about writer discipline. Are you disciplined? I don't know if I would say disciplined. Um, but I start off quite slowly. Usually the first month, I'm lucky if I get 50 pages down. <laughs> but I'm feeling my way in, getting to know the characters, whose story is this? Why am I telling this story? And then it speeds up. And then as the deadline approaches, it gets much faster. <laughs> um, but towards, you know, towards the, last, the last couple of months, I'm probably working seven days a week, more or less. And, and you speak about Karen Pirrie. This is a return to Karen Pirrie. Yes. And I'm right in thinking you, you decided that you were going to leave Karen Pirrie behind. Why, why did you return to her? I was never going to leave her behind. I was just not planning on writing her just then. Right. Um, because I'm, I'm, I've started this series of what my publishers are calling The Nines, mm. 79. In 1989, and the next one is 1999, which was supposed to be what I was writing next. <laughs> but Karen wouldn't leave me alone, so um, I, I like to I like to switch it up. I'm, I'm not very good at uh, doing the same thing again and again and again. Uh, ever since my my second book that I wrote when I quit the day job, I've had to write alternate characters in the books because I get bored with them. And, and <laughs> you've, uh, this is the seventh Karen Perry and the first one I think was way back 2003, 2002 mm, thereabouts, so yeah. it's a 20 year span for, for six yeah. or seven books, so is that just what you're saying, you just return every yeah. periodically? Yeah, uh, I was, uh, for a while she was she was the alternate to the Tony Hill and Carol Jordans and then 
she's turn it to something else. Um, but I think, I mean, although 20 years have passed, she has not aged 20 years. <laughs> so this is, this is great. My, my fictitious universe has different time scales. I see. So 20 years have passed, but Karen's probably only aged maybe five or six years. But she's progressed and she's, she's, progressed. she's making a point. Yes, yes. And uh, you, you spoke about it, it being set, um, it, well, it is set during COVID. Um, but it's a, it's a few years since COVID, three mm. years since COVID. So was it difficult to, 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 well, A, was it a challenge to write during COVID? And are you having, uh, write, writing about three years on, does that make it easier somehow? Uh, but I, I didn't find it too difficult to write through COVID because lockdown was a bit like writing a book anyway. Mm. You know, I'd sit in my room and, and, and write or, or play computer games till I think about the next <laughs> bit and go for a walk and then come back and write some more. So in that sense, it wasn't hugely different. Um, but I, I couldn't write about COVID during COVID. I was writing 1979 and 1989 um, because I, I needed to stand on solid ground. Mm. And for me, that meant going, going back into the past, really. Uh, but writing about it, looking back at it, I thought it was important to remind ourselves because we forget very, very quickly. Things disappear from our consciousness. We we'll maybe remember one or two details, but the day-to-day, -day, the, the elements of it, the things that really moved us at the time, the things that scared us, are easy to, to put to one side and forget. We move on, we move away from them. And I think some things are, are too important to be forgotten about. So I wanted to set this book then to remind us what it was like uh, the strangeness of Edinburgh with no people. Mm. I mean, if you've spent any time in Edinburgh <laughs> at New Year or the festival, you'll know how bizarre <laughs> that was. I mean, it's a couple of times we were the only people on George the Fourth Bridge. It mm. was like the zombie apocalypse without the zombies, you know. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, it, it was... Uh, and it's, as you said, a book within a book. Is that yes. challenging in itself? Yeah, I don't know quite why I thought about doing that, really. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, was, it was like, you know, why give yourself an extra problem? Mm. <laughs> but then it's about challenge, isn't it? I mean, for me, um, I don't just want to write the same book again and again. Mm. I want to, to challenge myself. For me, the point is to try and write a better book every time. And I know that that's probably not possible, but that's the ambition every time. I remember my friend Reg Hill, who created D. Alan Pasco, once saying, he said, you, you start off every book with this platonic ideal, this is going to be the perfect book. Vivid characters, mm. beautiful setting, lovely dialogue, plot flows smoothly as a river, and every sentence you put down takes you further away from that. <laughs> you know? Well, this is a, a paperback, this is a paperback yep. version there, the hardback came out in October, it passed lying. Uh, what's next for you? 1999. Yeah. Um, but in the meanwhile, I have a novella coming out in May called Queen Macbeth, which is part of Ber Berlin, the Scottish publishers, have started a new series called Darkland Tales, where they've invited writers to go and revisit uh, an element of Scottish history. Mm. So I have the chance to go and explore the real Lady Macbeth and put all Shakespeare's lies <laughs> to, to the sword. We'll look forward to seeing that. Val McDermott, thanks for joining us in Scotland tonight. Thanks very much.